All right, so hello everybody. Uh, I don't see my slides on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so my name is Arunas and I am WordPress plugin developer, uh, half of my time. The other half, I'm also a teacher. I teach web development in local college. And as you can see from the slide, probably I'm pretty involved in WordPress community too. Uh, as a lot of things in life, this one, this project is started with a blog post. So I wrote something on the internet. And the internet responded back. And the problem is, well, not a problem, but I wrote about Jetpack. Do you know what Jetpack is? Who knows what Jetpack is? Okay, uh, do you like Jetpack? Okay, I'm <laughs> free. Uh, do you hate Jetpack? Okay, so that's a strange audience because whenever you talk about it on the internet, and that's probably the difference, uh, apparently Jetpack is a very heated issue. VP drama, hashtag. Some people hate it, uh, say that it slows down your site, it's very bloated and everything. Other people say it's a cool thing, I use it all the time, I love it. Uh, so basically on the internet, internet, everybody has an opinion about it, everybody. Uh, but whenever you ask the people who hate it, so you say it's bloated, it slows down your site, uh, what's your data about it? How do you know it slows down your site? And the answer usually is a friend of a friend of a friend had a website that was slow and was using Jetpack. Uh, and if you go even more in the details, it, uh, it appears that it had like a gazillion plugins running on it, uh, a, a horrible caching strategy or no caching strategy at all, and it was not really Jetpack. And if you go to the data, actually, uh, there isn't much of it. Uh, if you Google Jetpack performance uh, review or something like that, you will probably find one study. It's an interesting study uh, about from guys from Brute Protect. Uh, they did measurements and the study is really interesting, but there is one small problem with it. The guys are working at Automatic, the makers of Jetpack. So it's a clear uh, conflict of interest. So that got me thinking, that got tickled the academic person in me. Uh, what about a proper study? What if somebody took Jetpack and conducted a, an independent research on, on it? Uh, they would have a clear methodology, uh, everything would be defined, how you did it and why you did it that way. And also it would be reproducible. So that means that anybody could do the same thing and test if they, they get the same result. Uh, and also compare to other plugins, because uh, of course you can do a lot of stuff that Jetpack does with other plugins. So what the, what the difference is performance wise? Uh, that was an ambitious project. Uh, uh, I was going to do a lot of stuff about it and everything, uh, but then life got in the way, as it often does. Uh, so the actual parameters of what I did will be a little bit less ambitious, but still. Uh, First of all, about the system, so I had the DigitalOcean droplet that I was using for something else and I wasn't using it anymore, so that's why uh, I used it. So well, it's pretty standard stuff. Uh, and there was nothing else running on it, so it's basically a sandbox. Uh, there were no external things that could inf influence it. Uh, I was also using pretty standard stack, so Ubuntu, Nginx, PHP, uh, MySQL, MariaDB. Uh, and most recent versions of everything. WordPress, Jetpack, and the standard theme, 2016. Uh, you, can, you can get everything on the internet pretty much for free, except for DigitalOcean, and I'm pretty sure uh, that's not a big cost. Uh, about content, so I, uh, I didn't want to run it on a completely empty site, so what we did, I had a couple students go to Wikipedia and basically steal a bit of content from it. So we took all the countries' descriptions, all the capital city descriptions, and uh, some other cities to make at least uh, 600 posts. So it's just a simple, not, not so big website, but still some content on it. Uh, and what were we measuring? Uh, because I am a backend developer, so I was mostly looking into the backend stuff, 
So we, we looked how, uh, how much memory was the website using, what was PHP execution time, uh, how, how many queries did we get to the database, uh, and how much assets local, local assets, scripts and styles, and external assets, script and styles were uh, loaded. And also, how many external requests was the plugin making? Because Jetpack, some parts of Jetpack, they are based on uh, stuff that is sitting on automatic servers, so that was also interesting. And that can be expensive in terms of perform performance. Uh, and how was it measured? So at first, I was thinking maybe I'll take an excellent plugin that's called Query Monitor because it was actually already counting all that stuff. Uh, but then I thought, well, nah, Query Monitor is a nice plugin, but again, it's not too small a plugin. So I wanted something more lightweight. So I build a custom one. Well, that's what I do. Uh, it's basically doing all its stuff at the shoot down hook. And if you know your WordPress hooks, that's pretty much the last thing that you can do, the last place where you can hook in. Then WordPress is pretty much done with everything that it does. Uh, and then I was loading a homepage of, of, the, of the blog nine times, measuring all this stuff, storing it in, into a CSV file. And uh, when I was calculating things, I would discard the biggest and the smallest value to uh, make, uh, make go away uh, all the flukes that might have happened that something was loading very long or something. Uh, and made an average of all my, all the remaining seven. Uh, so do you have any questions on the methodology part? Does it seem something that would be interesting? All right, so now let's go to the results. So the results were as following. First, memory usage. So with just activating Jetpack, nothing else. You just download the plugin and press the activate button. It would add almost half a megabyte of memory usage. And that wouldn't be too bad, but with a just simple site, that's actually 14% increase. Uh, if you activate, activate one Jetpack module, on average, it would grow to uh, almost three quarters of a megabyte. And that's 22%, 20, almost 23% increase. Uh, the least increase would be from infinite scroll, and the most increase will be from sharing module. On Jetpack, there is also an option when you install it and activate it. Uh, they say we have this set of recommended modules. So you can just click one button and it turn on uh, a whole bunch of modules. So if you do that, that's two megabytes of additional memory. Uh, and that's 61% increase. And if you activated everything, that becomes 2.5 megabytes increase. Keeping in mind that WordPress itself, when having no Jetpack installed, Jetpack installed would uh, use 3.3 megabytes of RAM, that's a pretty big increase, right? Uh, but the thing is, uh, WordPress websites, they do not exist in nature with just WordPress and Jetpack. You always have other plugins. And if you factor in that you have a lot of other stuff going on, this increase does not uh, is not that big a deal anymore. But now, in the numbers, it looks quite bad, right? Uh, when you look at execution times, you can also see an increase of 0.076 seconds. Uh, again, that's not a, not, this doesn't look so bad, right? Uh, but keeping in mind that the whole WordPress on that setup would uh, generate in 0.18 seconds, that becomes quite bigger. But the problem I have with this result is I uh, actually made a mistake of using such a good system, such a fast system, uh, that the results fluctuate a lot. And yeah, I have like 30% difference plus or minus uh, of what the results are and everything falls into the margin of error. So to have reliable results on this, you would have to run either on a much slower system or a lot more uh, data to, to make it more reliable. Uh, now, in terms of, of database, how do you think would it fare? Is it a big drag on a database? Is that big 
Jetpack Big. Uh, well, okay, let's give some baseline. So if you just have uh, activated Jetpack, it would add one query. Uh, if you activate uh, related posts or custom CSS, that would add one more, so you have two more queries. Uh, if you activate extra widgets or infinite scroll, that would add three queries. And if you activate all recommended modules, it's seven queries. And if you activate everything, that's plus 10 queries. And do you think that's a lot? Uh, if you look again at just plain WordPress with 2016, that's a lot. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't have that. Because uh, WordPress itself only has uh, 11 queries by itself. But that's just WordPress itself with nothing else on it. But if you take any site in nature, as I say, uh, on home page, you would have anywhere from 50, 70, up to 200 queries in your front page. And then you take that into account, 10 plus queries, again, not so much difference. Assets. Uh, if you just take WordPress, it would load six internal scripts from a safe server, uh, five internal styles from the same server, and one external style that's the font from Google Fonts. Uh, if you add all recommended modules, that's plus one, uh, plus two, plus two scripts, and plus two styles. If we have all modules, that's plus 11 scripts, uh, 13 scripts, and plus 11 uh, styles. So this is actually quite a lot. In terms of that, this is quite a, lo quite a lot. And the most stuff is being added by infinite scroll, uh, gravatars, and a photo. Uh, also likes. Uh, so this one. So how much external HTTP request does happen on home page when you have Jetpack activated? What do you think? Five, 10, 20? Five? Any takers on five? <laughs> Actually, zero. On front end, when you're just loading a site as a simple view, user, view, viewer, it doesn't add anything there, zero. So in conclusion, what we've learned is that Jetpack will always add at least half a megabyte of memory usage and up to 2.5. Uh, there is also a difference in execution time, but it would be better to have more data on that before any definitive conclusions. Uh, but only a handful of modules add additional assets, and not, not that much of them, and no remote requests on home page. Uh, as I said, I was mo a bit more ambitious on that, and as always, you have research, you have always have to say what you're going to do next with what you have. So first thing is I didn't have, uh, well, I didn't manage to find time to test uh, other plugins that you could do feature by feature comparison. For example, if you're using contact forms from Jetpack or if you're using something like contact forms and what's the difference there? Uh, that is something that would be really interesting to see and that is something that I'm definitely planning on doing. Uh, another thing is uh, what I realized also that for a lot of modules, uh, the dirty work is not happening on the home page. So whenever testing them, you have to look into different places. So if you're using something like related posts, so it will not, all the dirty work, it will not show up on, uh, on, your, on your homepage. You would have to go to a single page to see what happens. Or if you or to have uh, comments activated, that's also where it happens. If you have something that is more uh, on administration side, you have to see what effect does it have on the admin panel also. Uh, also, for execution times, we have definitely need more data to be more definitive on that. Uh, but there is also a thing, uh, whenever I talk about Jetpack and say, okay, so I'm looking at Jetpack and everything, uh, so they say, are you using Jetpack yourself and would you recommend it to your clients? So there is a discussion to be had on that because it all depends on your goals. 
uh, if you need control and flexibility, there are a lot of great plugins that give you that. You can activate Contact Form 7 and have a gazillion settings to make it look and work just the way you need. But if you just need a simple contact form, maybe you don't need all those. And uh, with Jetpack, what you get is stability. That means you can install that plugin and pretty much forget about it. Because then the new version comes in, you just update it, and it would still work. Because there's a big company behind it, they do a lot of testing about it, and uh, uh, you're pretty much guaranteed that nothing will break from updating Jetpack. But if you're using yet another contact forms plugin that somebody did and that has like 20 active users and they come up with a new version, can you always be sure that the update will not break anything? Not anymore. So it all depends on your goals. If you want more control, uh, sometimes having separate things uh, will be much more useful for you. But if you need just something that just works and you don't need to do anything with it, uh, then you just activate it. It has a couple of settings, and that's all right with you. Then it's okay. But if you need control and and do tinker with the thing, then Jetpack will probably be not the right thing for you. But in terms of performance, of course you're getting a hit uh, because you are loading a lot of things in, on your site. But it's actually quite well coded. So it doesn't add that much bloat. Okay, do you have any questions for me? So we go through. Okay. Um, do you have some data if you uninstall Jetpack after it's all in the same like in, in start or? They have some queries. Oh, not yet, but <laughs> this is a thing that I'm going to do just like as I come off the stage. It's actually interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. But uh, I'm pretty sure it will come up the same, but I'm going to check that. That's interesting. Not yet. Okay, there was a question there. And there's a question down there. So come out the throw. Watch out. Perfect. Hi. Thanks Hi. for a good talk. Um, we were talking about automated tests before mm -hmm. lunch, um, and, and you were also had some points here about comparable or other plugins and stuff like that. Like, would it be possible to try to do these on a larger scale and maybe even automate some of these things to, you know, uh, try to get data from more plugins? You know? uh, one of the things making more even more automated, yes, yeah. it's actually pretty ready for that because all the data is already in CSV. So you can just basically take it and, and do stuff with it. And uh, all the measurement happens if you pass uh, some query to it. So basically it's pretty ready for that. And the, one of the things why I haven't done this yet is uh, I know quite a lot of plugins myself, but I, I'm pretty sure I don't know the whole 40,000 that we have in the repo. And uh, the thing is uh, you can take the most popular in the class, but that will not always be uh, a fair comparison because uh, it's like comparing, uh, I don't know, uh, a bicycle and a Rolls Royce, right? It's very different things. So for a profit, this comparison also is interesting because uh, this is how people change. I don't want Jetpack that module, I'll, I'll install Contact Form 7. Mm. But uh, feature-wise, it's not a fair comparison because you're loading a lot more data. And, and if doing this kind of comparison, I'm pretty sure Jetpack will come ahead all of the time. Uh, so what would be very interesting, it would be to find small, find small plugins that do pretty much the same thing that Jetpack does. Mm. But for that, I, would, I really need, I've asked it on, the, on my blog before, but I would really need actual input from the people who know plugins that do pretty much the same. Okay. Do we have any further questions? No, no hands. Okay, I have Everyone's afraid of that <laughs> cube, I think. Okay, so <laughs> I, I also have one, one more thing to say, and I said uh, I have to be independent, so in interest and full disclosure, I have to say that I, I received a $20 donation from Matt Mullenweg for this, so I'm <laughs> a bit biased. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a question, basically, what tools did you use to perform the test, or in, in short terms, I'm guessing that's in your blog post as well? 
yeah, so uh, as I said before, I, want, I wanted to use Query Monitor, but one of the reasons is having data exported easily. I, I ended up coding it myself. Yeah. So it is not public yet, but I'm going to, do, to publish that also together with the raw data that I have. Uh, you will be able to find this on my blog. Uh, so uh, this will come up in a couple days, I guess, when I have time to sit down and write it down. Uh, but it will be open source and anybody could use it for measuring this or anything else. Yeah. Uh, do we have, I think we have time for one more question or something. Yeah, uh, up in the back. Uh, so you one makes a good throw. Perfect. <laughs> Um, you mentioned about activating Jetpack. Yeah. And um, do you connect it with a WordPress account at that point? Uh, I have data of connected and not connected also. Uh, actually, uh, making it connected uh, re re lowers the, the amount of, of, of code you're loading because yeah, it probably doesn't uh, have all this, all this interface thing for, please activate me. But okay. it's, it's close. Okay, and you haven't tested it with development mode? Uh, no, not in development mode. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, a big thank you to Arunas, and uh, <laughs> let's get ready for the next.